Hey, my Truther family, this your girl, Truth Seeker, back on here, live in effect, with my Mary Mary Season 2, Episode 11 review, as promised. Got you guys' this email. Want to give a shout out to my girl, Katie, and my girl, Honey Boo Boo Fan. Just want to say, hey, thanks for the love, the emails, the support, um, the comments the subscriptions you guys subscribing and liking my videos I do this for you all you know I enjoy uh, getting up coming over here to my couch in my room and just you know it's like I'm at home with family you know just talking to you guys is just like chatting with family so let's get to it I really enjoy doing it okay so here we go okay the show opens up with Tina and Teddy bringing their new baby son, Santana, home from the, the hospital to meet the family. Very cute baby. He received a lot of love. <laughs> Tina says that she's done having any more. Her and Teddy has like five kids right now. So, yeah. <laughs> you need to be done, girl. Unless you just trying to build an army <laughs> to do a hostile takeover of just like the world or something, girl. Get your army up. I ain't mad either. As long as you can take care of them. So, uh, moving on, um, Eric and Warren practices her song by, for the House Sweet the Sound show. And her husband has reservations about the song, even though Erica pro proclaims, you know, I got this. You know, she don't like, I got this, I got it. So, uh, which is good to have confidence, but you want to make sure you actually do got it <laughs> before you go out there with the I got it. Okay, get it, girl. Get it first. So anyway, uh, Mitch calls Erica and begs her to talk to Tina about doing a December gig for an extra, extra $30,000 on top of what they were already being paid, which I believe was about $70,000, $70 or 80000 about 70000 And um, Tina says no. You know, she says her and Teddy, they have a, a trip planned to go to Hawaii around that time and uh, she goes off on Erica pretty much and tells her that she did not want to talk about any Mary Mary business while she was on her little maternity leave you know which I can understand that you know she exhausted <laughs> you know we saw how she was when she was pregnant moving around dancing around doing her thing she was giving it you know um, while she was pregnant and everything so she do deserve her rest but you know I understand Erica's point too. She needed an answer to give to Mitch to let, you know, the people know yay or nay. So, um, Tina said, you know, and she made a good point, you know, with this, what she said. She said that her marriage would suffer if she did not pay tribute to her husband by spending time with him. I really liked it, that statement, you know, because, you know, hey, sometimes money ain't everything. You know, I do agree with that. You know, give your husband homage and everything. Don't always put your job before your marriage because at the end of the day, that's what's going to, you know, be your support, your main support. So kudos, Tina. So anyway, uh, moving on, Mary's found out that instead of coming to her child's birth, that their father on the same day as Tina <laughs> baby's birth, he, when he was asked why he didn't tell them uh, that he got married, <laughs> he says that only close friends and families were, were notified and invited. And that hurt Tina and uh, Erica very much to hear that. And rightly so. You know, that, that was kind of cold. You know, that was a cold thing to say to your children. But anyway, we're going to keep him lifted up in our prayers because he dealing with some serious demons, <laughs> you know, with that. I don't know what's going on because I'm not in the family, you know. They didn't invite me to no Thanksgiving dinner or anything last year so that I could get an earful of what's really going on at the round table. But I'm pretty sure that, you know, it's more than just the one side of the story. So I'm going to push on my, my business and go on to the next. Okay. So anyway. I was confused in the next segment. Okay, I don't know if anybody else was confused, but I was confused. Where Erica says to to Mitch that she felt like Tina 
was quitting on her and will go off and choose to be a full-time mom, you know, instead of being her, you know, co-teammate, you know, in this group. I was confused because Erica is the one going solo and pursuing a solo career, leaving the group first. <laughs> that just was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> it was a what moment for me. I don't know about if anybody else caught that, but she was, you know, kind of like, seemingly how Tina should have been should have felt which I believe Tina do feel that way because you know Tina she get her shots in you know about Erica trying to go solo and stuff since she told her yeah we saw that last episode how that keg exploded that was a powder keg waiting to explode and honey did it explode and it went pow <laughs> kaboom but anyway uh, she said um, I was just confused about that you know I feel I feel Tina for gravitating towards her family i really do feel her you know the family is important you know she has five kids a husband to take care of as god intended you know that's what god intended for the woman to you know be home with her husband take care of her family um you know but i commend her for that you know, for just, you know, saying it and keeping it real. But I feel she should draw that line in the sand and make the proper preparations to drop the finale, you know, curtain on it all, you know, on the whole career, you know, and not drag on in the career that she doesn't even want to be in any longer. You know, just, you know, bow out gracefully. Go out while you're on top. You know, just say, here go my bow. You know, I'm bowing out, you know. Mwah, mwah, love y'all. But I, I got to go because I'm not feeling this anymore. Just let us know. You know, we family. We can talk and you can tell us how you feeling. And, and this is what it is. Either you can deal with it or you can deal with it. <laughs> I mean, you just got the two choices and they pretty much the same. So, Tina had a, a sister chat with her little sister in the next segment, Elena. And she asked her had she contacted their father to kind of reach out to him, you know. Elena said that she did, but he kept putting her on the back burner and giving her the runaround, you know, pretty much avoiding her, you know. And Tina told her to make amends quickly with him or else her marriage would suffer because she would project her attitude and hurt feelings and everything from her father's rejection onto her innocent husband. And I, I agree with that. You know, I totally agree that we can uh, take things out on our spouse or mate that we're upset with about another person, even an old ex or something. So definitely you want to, you know, definitely make amends while the time is, you know, right now. So um, I also felt that Elena, <laughs> you know, you know, when she said I really felt her, she was like, well, you know, when he said, hey, I'm not, you know, available, um, I don't have time right now, she's like, I'm not going to chase him and beg after him. I've done all that I could do to reach out to him. I had to give that a righteous amen. You know what I'm saying? I had to say yes. <laughs> I'm with you with that. You know, I'm not really a person chaser, downer. You know, I'm not that. I don't have that title. I don't. I don't have that T-shirt and wear that button with that matching hat. I can't. I can't chase you and and come after you. You know, and I'm trying to be the one to make men's and you not. See, it's supposed to be two, not just one or one and a half attempt on one person's side. So yeah, <laughs> you know, takes two. Um. You can't make a person do something that they don't want to, all right? All we can do is pray for them and keep it moving, okay? And that's what we're going to do. So move on to the next scene. So in the next scene, Goo was looking for Justin to come in and found out uh, he was banned from coming backstage by Mitch, you know. She confronted Mitch about banning Justin, you know, just right up in his face and everything, you know. I believe he was worried, you know, that Justin was going to be aggressive like last time. You know, they didn't part ways on a good note. I have been worried, you know, about my safety as well, you know, I, I, so I feel Mitch, you know. 
I mean, Justin did threaten him the last time that they met up. <laughs> you know, he threatened to lay unholy hands on the boy. So, <laughs> yeah, you can't come back stage, Justin. <laughs> you need to stay wherever you at and, and be at where you at. As long as it's not at here. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> uh, they went to the next segment where Tina celebrated with her husband their 12th anniversary. Ted, Teddy made Tina promise that she wouldn't work so hard, you know, and, and, and so much. You know, he said he wanted her home more. I felt it to be a bit of a scripted, you know, thing because they knew Erica was about to go and do her solo thing, you know. Um, I saw it coming already. You saw it coming already. We all saw it coming, <laughs> you know, already in the past, you know, segments of the show. So I just felt like it was the setup for the solo, you know, they had to, you know, Tina had to make it seem like, you know, oh, you know, it's my husband making me stay home. But, you know, of course she wants to. And so, and uh, Miss Solo Dolo over there, Erica, she wanted to do her thing. So, okay, <laughs> we knew that. Moving on, um, they jumped back on to Google sneaking Justin backstage, okay, in the next segment. As Mitch said, you know, that's what Mitch said. He said he, Justin, he comes sneaking in the back like a little rat, <laughs> you know, with a fake pass. They Googled and dug him up from somewhere, you know, borrowed from somebody, I guess. I laughed out loud <laughs> when I heard him say that. That was funny. Um, Justin just ended up asking to speak to Mitch. And Mitch just totally blew him off telling Justin you know he didn't have time right then because he had to do his job which was true you know he was on the job he didn't have time for all that drama when you work in real folks they got real jobs you ain't got time for personal drama on the job so I understand Mitch um I even felt like you know it should have waited until after the performance you know, because they was all in the zone before Justin came walking on the scene. So, you getting me out my zone. Out of my managerial zone, you was getting me off track. So, yeah, I need for you to wait, Justin. <laughs> Erica was set to go on in like two seconds. So, yeah. But anywho, Erica walks out. In some tight 7th grade 11 year old girls pants. White pants. You know. And sat behind the judges panel. <laughs> they, they they pants it seemed like every episode get tighter and tighter. I, I, I be trying to breathe for them. You know. Big girls. You know. My sisters. Come on. <laughs> we can't be. You know. Wearing them little. You know. Tight. Spray on pants. We got to do better. Okay, I just want to put that out there. I still love y'all, though. We family. But we can't be doing what the skinny girls do. Not all of it. <laughs> okay. Anywho, uh, she went and sat behind the judges panel at the uh, How Sweet the Sound thing to judge the people. Fred Hammond comes out, performs, and does a phenomenal, you know, uh, tear down the house show job. Okay. Erica then goes, she changes her clothes into an ugly dress, and her hair was a hot mess. You know, I just kind of felt like, you know, she looked like a gypsy, like, like I don't know, a fortune teller or something. I thought she was going to, you know, read me, you know, my fortune, you know, am I going to eat Apple Jacks or Corn Flakes tomorrow morning for breakfast? I just, I didn't know. I thought she was going to give me that and enlighten me and let me know what I was going to have. But, you know, it was a mess. I didn't like it. It looked too witchy. You know, the whole everything, the hair and the dress mess. Anyway, she sang the song Change. And it was exactly terrible. When she got off at the stage, she knew it. And she told her husband Warren the same when he asked her how did she feel about her performance. She was like, I, not good. Uh, we, Me and Warren, we both was like, um, yeah, you right. <laughs> I love Warren because he keep it 100. Real. I mean, he just say how it is. Y'all looking at me right now. Y'all who got something to say because I said something about Mary wasn't singing well, looking not good. See, I'm not going to sit up. You want me to sit up on here and just tell a lie because she just, you know, okay. That's another channel. <laughs> That's not this channel. But anyway, moving on. Uh, 
you know, he confessed the same feelings, you know, when, when she told him, I didn't do good. He said, yeah, you're right, you know. And he felt that it was the wrong kind of song. And they agreed that she should sing another song, you know, the Mary Mary song yesterday. Um, here's my thing about that. I feel like if you could sing, I don't care if it's A, B, C, D through Z. You're going to have people on the flow repenting. You know what I'm saying? As a gospel singer, you know, coming to Jesus Christ by the time you even get to N. <laughs> you ain't even at Z. <laughs> you is at just N. And folks is N on the flow giving their life to the Lord. You just... <laughs> If you could sing, for real sing. You know, I felt like, you know, she didn't want to switch the, the uh, you know, song to yesterday. One of their songs. Just wanted to put, it's just putting people back in a familiar place, you know, and everything. You staying safe. You know, when you go solo, you want to do something different. You don't want to go back to the old basics, one, two, three, ABCs, you know. Yes, that was a popular song, a nice song, you know, yesterday, but it's Mary Mary song and you're trying to branch out and do your own thing. So you have to be creative and make, that's the whole point of singing a song, making it your own, you know, you trying to be solo dolo. So anyway, um, you know, it's so real y'all, you know, in my honest to goodness opinion, it's like this. Um, they mentioned it to Mitch, you know, and he was like, mm, switch the song in the middle of the thing. You know, he had a negative reaction to it, you know, doubting that it was a good move. But then later, they end up asking the house sweep the shut sound show manager or host, whoever he is, this guy, you know, if she could switch the song in he was okay with it you know so we shall see how she does in the next gig in the next episode you know my honest opinion honest to goodness opinion is that this god ain't called no married woman to leave her husband leave her children at home and go off on tour for months on end away from her family and marital and parental responsibilities you know it is going to take some time for her to come into her own voice style and brand that's just how it is it's going to take a lot of time if that's what she want to do you know um in the spirit i see more deal level offerings from the devil and her taking them for more success and her music and look, I see it going more sexy and secular, BKA worldly. And, you know, she, like I said, she had a very witchy, gypsy look to me tonight. You know, that's just like the beginning, you know, of it all. And I just, oh, I, I don't have a good feeling, you know, about it, you know overall i know that they have taken the baphomet you know because i see them throwing up their little 666 signs and their you know satanic hand gestures i try not to do it too much but y'all that know know what i'm talking about um they have already sold out you know many of the satanic hand gestures tina does in the past videos if you pay attention she's always throwing this or you know it's that's how they mean to do it you know di directly in your face without you even noticing it you know i've seen erica do the 666 sign you know for the naysayers please do your research those of us who are educated in such notifications let us continue to watch and pray for them you know because we we know what they doing and have done uh remember just because a person is singing a, a gospel song does not mean that they are automatically having a ticket to heaven you know everything that glitters ain't gold you know so be wise you know as serpents and gentle as doves uh sometimes jesus will allow us to fulfill our desire to work on certain projects for a season even if it does lead and lean 
to the left towards downfall trails you know he is able to pick us back up again and redirect us back onto his holy track but for those of us who know better let us stay on the straight and narrow path you know don't don't flirt with such a gamble because no one knows the day or the hour that Jesus Christ will be back you know by then it may be too late if you procrastinate and wait and say I'm gonna do what I want to do and and then at the last second before the Trump sound I'm gonna get saved I'm gonna go back to Christ I'm a act right you know as long as it's still today there is time to change and give your life sincerely over to Jesus Christ you know it's not time to play any games so you know I'm watching this and I'm giving my commentary and everything but you guys know I'm church lady you know for real 100% for Christ and seeing people coming to Christ and I definitely am for the people you know and God's people so I say to everyone uh, you guys are totally a blessing to me thank you for watching like this video subscribe you guys, I'm getting ready to make another video for part two, for, uh, well, part 12, <laughs> episode 12. You guys, I love you much. Stay tuned. Talk to you later. Truth Seeker out.